your car a BH23 or a BS23? What you talking about? Is this color EV2 or FE5? What? Oh, any code. Our codes are the best. Well, yeah, our codes are pretty cool. So what is the deal with Mopar fender tags? If you have never studied them, or if you are not that familiar with the codes, man, you have no idea what you're looking at when you see those, because it's just a bunch of numbers to the general person. But they're really unique and they're really cool because they tell a lot of the story of the vehicle, of how it was built and ordered. And if you're lucky enough to still have one and the build sheet, that's great because they can bring a lot of value to your car. And nowadays, with our online resources that we have, it's never been easier to decode a car. The best eBody Fender Tag decoder I found is on eBodies.org. If you go to their homepage, and then in the very middle of it, you'll see decoders, and you click on that link, and that'll take you to another page where it has a link for the build sheet decoder or the Fender Tag decoder. But first, let's take a look at my car's Fender Tag and decode that. So here's the picture of my fender tag. Now if you're wondering why the bottom right corner is blocked out, well that is the serial number. Now unfortunately in today's world, there's a lot of shady people out there that try to do a lot of forgeries. And if they can have someone's real existing serial number for their car, they could create basically a clone and, and try to fake and forge something that's actually existing to get the documentation they need. So anyway, that's basically why I would always block that number out online if I ever post any pictures of mine. So not that there's anything to hide, but rather you should really keep that private. It's the most important thing. So here's what the decoder tag looks like on ebodies.org. Now they made it really simple and this looks great because it looks just like your fender tag. So it's pretty much impossible to screw it up. Now here's the decoder filled out with all my fender tag information. Now let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at how it broke down my fender tag. And we'll start with the lower left corner. That's basically the first line. So E63, that's like your engine code. So the 3D3, single four barrel, 335 horsepower, painted orange. The 330 base engine is blue, so that's something you might see like in a, uh, I think the Grand Coupe, I believe. Now the next line over is the D21 transmission, so that's going to be our four speed. And then BS23, so we'll break down that. B stands for Plymouth Barracuda. S is special price class. If it was a regular Barracuda, it would be H. And then 23 is your two door hardtop. You would see the same number there in like your Challenger. Your Challenger would be uh, a J instead of a B. So a Challenger would be JH23 or JS23. And then we're going to jump over to the engine type. And that's N code, right? 3D3, single four barrel, eight cylinder. Then zero is your model year. So this is an N0B. If it was a 1971, it would have it be a N1B. And B is your ham tramic. The other option there would be California. Offhand, I don't remember what code that would be, but most of them were built in Hamtramck. And then is the serial number, and we are blocking that out. So the next line up, that is your color of the car, FE5, bright red. And then the next is your trim code, H6E4. High trim grade, six is vinyl bucket seats, E4 is red, so red bucket seats, red interior. Uh, and then the up full door panel is 000. I'm not exactly sure what that stands for. And then 216, that's where a lot of people will look and say, hey, this is the birthday of my car, right? This is when it was scheduled for production. That doesn't mean it was actually built on uh, February 16th, but that was the scheduled production day. And then the next number is the vehicle order number, or VON. And the third line up, and this is going to be our top of the color or the top of the vehicle. And this one's FE5 again, so that means it's painted body color. If it was a vinyl roof car, it would be something different, like a V1X, I believe. 
for like a black vinyl top. And then A62. Now that is your rally instrument cluster. Now that is not standard on the CUDA, even though it is a CUDA. Now it was standard on the Challenger RT, but not on the Barracuda CUDA. It was optional. And then C55 again is bucket seats. J45 is your hood tie down pins. J54 is your sport hood. M21 drip rail moldings. M25 your body sill moldings. All right, now let's go to the next page. Now we're still on our line four, M31 body belt moldings. M88 deck molding treatment or taillight panel molding. So that's gonna be uh, your chrome trim around your taillight panel. N41 dual exhaust, which is you know standard equipment on this one. N42 bright exhaust tips, again standard equipment. N85 your tachometer. R11 your two watt AM radio, no Bluetooth there. V6X black longitudinal sport stripes, sport stripes, which is your hockey stick stripe in this vehicle case. Y05 built for USA order. So that is, you know, would be different if it was built for export or uh, built for Canada. And then EN1, which stands for end of the sales codes on the fender tag. So you ha always have that at the very end of the tag. So now in some cars, they might even have two tags, all right? If they have enough options, they'll carry over to a second one. And that's how the fender tag breaks down on my car. Now let's take a look at some of the unique options you can get on these old Mopars. One of the most visible and sought after is the shaker hood. You could get these in different colors, all depending on what color a car and how it was optioned. But they were available in most commonly in argent, uh, black, and in red. Now you could get a Dana 60 rear axle with the Track Pack A33 or Super Track Pack A32. A really unique and side stripe option was the strobe stripe on the, available on the CUDA. The code for that would be V4 and then depending on what color it was it could be an X or W or so on. Then there was the optional rally dash gauge cluster that was A62. That was optional on the CUDA but like I mentioned earlier it was actually standard on the Challenger RT. Another really striking and unique option is the mod top. It's one of those where you love it or you hate it, but I think it's so unique and so rare, it's just really screams 1970. It definitely will command a high price. The mod top is V1P for yellow or V1Q for blue. So there's two common wings available for E-bodies. In 1970, they had the Go Wing. And in 1971, it was called the gull wing. And the difference you can see here, the gull wing was more, had curved edges on the sides where it bent down. The code for the wing was J81. There's also the rim blow steering wheel, that is S83. Now let's take a look at some of the engines. Your standard 340 was an H code. Your 340 six pack would be a J code. Then your 383 Magnum is an N code. You have the U code 440 Magnum. And the V code 440 six pack. And the Hemi is the R code. Now here's a breakdown on the colors you can get on your old Mopars. The names are different depending where you had a Dodge or a Plymouth, even though it could be the same color. There's also here a breakdown for the 70 Plymouth uh, Barracuda colors to see what percent were made in certain colors. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't. Be sure to like the video, and I'll see you next time.